Uh, let's talk about something completely different, okay? Let's have Mark here on stage, because uh, Mark Janssen works for Rabo, and Rabo last year had a fantastic project. Does anybody remember what they had last year? We Trade. They were one of the first uh, companies to come with a real production model, do something, and, uh, and, and which was in the core, you know, a much better letter of credit and much cheaper. But now they have a project completely on the edge, not on the main banking system, but on a supporting system. And Mark is an interesting guy anyway, because, I mean, why would you have a guy who's worked all, uh, everywhere all over the world and then worked for Booking for a long time, so Booking grow from, you were in human, HR from 3,000 people to how 18, much? Huh? 18,000. To eight, from 3,000 to 18,000 and a huge amount of managers and basically, why would you then, after doing that kind of international interesting job, go to Rabo? Because it's also an interesting company, but why would you do that? And then he made a very useful project, which is not only useful for Rabo, but for the whole industry. This is really interesting and Rabo has done that many times before. So give him a big hand, Mark Janssen, Rabobank. Good afternoon. Uh, like uh, Vincent said, I'm Mark. Uh, I had the people development team at Arabo, which uh, we have a very, very small uh, part of that organization called the HR Innovation Hub, which is exactly uh, one young lady who's on vacation right now. Anna, I hope you're watching through the live stream because this is actually her, uh, her story that I'm going to share uh, with you. Uh, w one young lady who uh, makes things happen and uh, works really, really well with our blockchain acceleration lab uh, who's, been, uh, who's been at Rabo for the last three years looking at uh, how can we put blockchain uh, to good use uh, for business problems. The good news is uh, I've learned from Jurgen that we're doing okay and we really haven't screwed this up. Uh, and then from the second presentation, I learned uh, you should code first and then do the consortium. And maybe we did a hybrid model that we had the blockchain lab code while we figured all the messy stuff around governance and alliances out. So I'm going to take you along in this uh, uh, trip. What I first want to start with is ultimately uh, 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 what do I see my team's uh, value add and how do we steer and work on a daily basis? It ultimately comes down, I'm convinced that within, uh, it said human resources, but it's really uh, HR uh, within human uh, resources. If we start fixing people problems, ultimately that's going to solve uh, business problems. Um, and I think when we look at the opportunities and also what's happening around us in the world today, uh, one of the biggest challenges is also talent mobility. And uh, we've been struggling uh, with this challenge for a little while. And um, then I got really lucky because then I started working for an uh, employer whose uh, ambition, whose vision is growing a better world together. And that gives me, especially from a cooperative bank, gives me a lot of room to say, what do we do within our core function for internal uh, employees at the Rabobank? But how, if with a little bit of extra investment, a little bit of extra effort, how can we bring this much broader to uh, the global labor market or uh, for right now for our MVP, uh, the Dutch labor market? So with this idea in mind, the reality is what's happening around us, no matter what job report you follow today, somewhere around a figure of between 50 and 55% right now has been identified of work that's just going to disappear purely because of changes within technology. And mind you, I'm not saying that 55% of jobs will disappear. What I'm saying is 55% of work will disappear just because of technology and innovation. Uh, and uh, when companies start really making large investments in that, um, we have a challenge. Uh, how do you get, ultimately, the, 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 magic, the magic wand, the magic uh, challenge for uh, human resources? How do you make you sure you get the right people in the right places at exactly the right time? Which works out really well, because uh, by trade, uh, I'm not an HR professional. I'm an economist. So for me, I get to geek out, because actually, you're talking about a, a free market. And, and how do you remove that friction? And what, uh, what we really realize is that to be able to empower employees to make moves uh, internally within the organization, but also within the labor market as a whole, one of the biggest challenges, especially for the banking space, is around trust and credibility. I remember when I uh, sent a text message to uh, Yanina, my boss, that says, if you guys are crazy enough to hire me, I'm all in. Uh, I immediately got a 35-page packet sent to me of all the information that I had to be submitted to the Dutch National Bank to make sure I was at least not halfway crazy and that I could at least do a reasonable job. One of those things was my, uh, my, my transcript of my grades from the university I studied at wasn't good enough. They literally needed a copy of my diploma. 
Well, the problem is, as you can hear from my accent, but my Dutch name, I spent a lot of time in the States, and my diploma was sitting in a box in the attic of my mother-in-law. So I called Stephanie up and I said, Stephanie, uh, you got to go up to the attic, uh, watch that last step because it's a doozy. Uh, grab my diploma out of the big box that says Mark's junk and take a picture. And funny enough, that picture, which I probably could have photoshopped, was okay enough to be found valid that made me competent to do this job. Ultimately, employees within the banking sector, but most sectors, run into this whole challenge of background checks and, and, and getting quickly uh, to work. Um, and, and that's the business case that we actually started, a really small case. How do we go from a screening process within the banking industry from 10 days and minimize it down to two days? That was the, that was the concept. Then we started thinking about it. What do we need? What's that consortium like? And also, at the same time, looking at our employees' desires. If we say our employees and our customers are used to data-driven digital banking through something like an app, why couldn't we do something in the same way for talent mobility? How, why couldn't we take someone's unverified LinkedIn profile, for instance, or that piece of paper CV that we all submit through the applicant tracking systems at every major company these days, why can't we digitize that with a stamp of approval, a certification that it's true, and be able to automate that so that we can again close that gap from 10 days to two days or, or just help people remove that point of friction to move from work to work to work to work. So. Why? Because, again, that big, huge challenge around mobility of work and different skills needed for different work and the reality of we're not going to expect that people continue to work for employers for 40 years like they did in the past. And the whole challenge of the gig economy, well, if it's up to me, I create an own gig economy within my own workplace, but I want to also help facilitate that across the board. The other thing is, of course, this whole challenge with serial craftsmanship, the fact that it's no longer uh, learn, go to school, uh, work, so earn, return, I do something nice for the community after retirement and burn, that's a joke. The reality is, it's going to be learn, work, learn, work, learn, work, learn, work, learn, work, and if I have to trust the Dutch government, I'm going to be doing that until I'm dead. Uh, sorry, bad joke. Uh, anyway, that also means something because careers in the past looked like this. We had vertical career ladders, and the reality is we're starting to look much more at career jungle gyms, not just within organizations, but again, to the outside world. The other thing, of course, is we have something very nicely called AVG, or GDPR. What the heck do we do with data? And to be honest, uh, trust around data is one of the biggest things that banks are busy with when we look to our customers. Uh, we have a challenge, of course, when we look at our employees, Facebook, et cetera, doesn't help with these types of things. So the same time we had this in the back of our mind, how do we actually empower employees with their own data, to decide who sees what at what time, and they can track it and trace it at all times for themselves? That's when we started talking with our, uh, uh, to our blockchain team and say, hey, could blockchain be a possible solution for this? And they said, absolutely, we think we have an idea. But you're not just going to be able to do it with Rabobank uh, data yourself. You're going to have to look much broader. And that's when we started exploring uh, the world around us. So literally about a year ago, we brought ING, IBN, who's also working with us uh, on these uh, together, along with all the large uh, education um, uh, companies around the Netherlands. Duo from the Dutch national government was there as well. And we started talking about, hey, is there something here? And everyone said, yes, we recognize the problem. We see the challenge. At that point, the, the case we were really looking at was VFT, which is uh, basically a certification that financial advisors need from the, the, over, from, the, from the government to say, you are enabled to do this work. Um, because that was a challenge. How do you produce VFTs when you move from one bank to the next to the next? Ultimately, we said, okay, to move quick, we need to, uh, to, 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 to get some commitment. And ultimately, we started working with NCOE, who happens to be Rabo's largest um, uh, education partner, Randstad, because they're our largest partner to provide us um, uh, with temporary help. Um, Rabobank, and I should also mention uh, HFM, who does most of our assessments, to really start looking at this problem and how could we get some hands and feet uh, to, uh, to this. I should also mention last week we went live with Workday, so of course it was in the back of my mind also is how do we get the data that we have of employees out and be able to certify this so we're also in talks with Workday to look at open standards and protocols and, and innovating on, on these platforms to, to make sure it is plug and play. 
So how do, we ina- who do, how do we see this ahead of us? Well, again, this is uh, Marijke. Uh, this is her personal data that's been verified. It's her education diplomas because she uh, graduated also as an econometrist from uh, the University of Groningen. Uh, she's got those VFT diplomas like I was talking about. And at the same time, she also has references, which can be the other places where she's worked, where they validated, yes, uh, she worked at this employer for this long and she did this. Um, we've worked it out to give you an example, again, the, edu- the, edu- the case I was talking about, VFT. Hey, these are certified, and again, this is not coming from the Rabobank because that certification lays with an institution like Duo. And at the same time, going back to that idea of um, Marike, uh, Marike needs to own her own data, when she applies for the job at the Rabobank or the ABN AMRO or the ING or any uh, employer for that matter, she simply can choose for herself which data she wants to share with that HR department. One challenge we did run into, especially when talking to technology providers, was the ever-present question of, well, which blockchain are you going to put it on? And we started running into challenges with platforms, 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 and uh, that's why uh, I think uh, the ladies and gentlemen within our blockchain lab came up with a really, really good solution, which is a universal ledger agent. I didn't screw that up, right? (laughs) The idea being, let's take technology out of the equation, because that was a major point of friction, and say, let's build something that we can use that will enable the employee to gather their own personal data and store their personal data on multiple blockchains, agnostic of a choice that a company makes, which would then again tie them into a specific platform or technology. So uh, I feel bad that I'm up here standing to announce it, uh, but uh, the Blockchain Acceleration Lab is actually going to open source everything that they've done related to this universal ledger agent uh, uh, very soon. With the idea being, we want to use this as a building block for multiple partners and alliances to come together to help us solve this bigger problem for all employees worldwide. Uh, and why do that? Because at the end of the day, uh, the reality is th- this talent mobility challenge and the future of work challenge is one that we all hold. Irregardless of the brand on our jacket where we walk around with or the which bank pass we carry in our back pocket, uh, we're in this together. And for me, HR is not, a, uh, is not a zero-sum game. If I win, that doesn't mean that you lose. I think we can all win together. And ultimately, I think this is a great case that shows how you can use an up-and-coming technology like blockchain to actually help me and my team solve people problems, ultimately helping to uh, solve business problems. Thanks for your time. <laughs> wow. Somebody who's ready before the time. Mark, what a planning. Amazing. It's, uh, it's my uh, orange sneakers and my really cool socks. Yeah, That's what I learned, learned today, it, too. You learned at uh, Booking.com to do that, uh, right? Hey, um, how, is this now, how is this now organized? Uh, uh, you, now worked, you work with Randstad and Duo and that kind of stuff. Is there an organization? Is it, uh, is it, is it fair? So, so to be quite honest with you, that's my biggest takeaway actually from Jürgen's presentation is the need for governance. To be quite honest with you, uh, I think we got really, really l- lucky in the fact that we have a use case that everyone feels yeah. and really sees the need for. Uh, I think the next step though is really start looking at the governance piece of how do we make sure um, those types of things get out of the way. I, I, I recognize through the ULA, uh, that that at least takes the whole technology conversation off the table. I think the next one is, uh, uh, like you uh, last me asked me last week, okay, for instance, uh, who's going to pay for those types of things? Yeah, who uh, pays for it now? Uh, right now, it's the technology side is completely funded from our side. Um, uh, but again, we're, we're leveraging work that's already being done yeah. by... Uh, and you're also, I mean, b- b- because open source is not enough, because yeah. we don't want open source, we want a well-managed platform, can be open source, very good, but we want a group of p- companies and we want to have it as big as possible. Yeah. What do you need for to do use critical mass for something like that? Because is this Dutch, or is this, or can this be bigger than yeah. Dutch? I mean, uh, what well, is your aspiration? Well, the, the aspiration is to make this av- available for everyone. I think um, there's a concrete, especially within the Dutch labor market right now, because of what's happening within the banking segment and the changing in our customer needs, you know, mm-hmm. who's walking into physical uh, uh, banks these days. That's where the, the need started. But I, I again, with the future of work and the change of work and what's happening, uh, this is, uh, uh, this is uh, broader than um, just the financial market here. Mm-hmm. What do I need? Uh, more people to say, hey, uh, we believe in this and we're willing to work together on this to make this happen. Because like I said, I think for there, there, there can only be winners in this.
Yeah, no, that is true. But if you, or if you basically have the data of this platform and who's basically uh, sharing which data and what, you have to keep that secret. You have to, on the other hand, you have to agree that statistics are available. So you need a good government. This is yep. very important data. And in the end, I want my identity. I, it's, you know, not only that I am, you know, that I have some kind of a uh, diploma from some kind of an authorization yeah. thing, but I want my own stuff as a as a as a member of the working public. I want my own identity. I want my CV to be uh, digitized and blockchain owned by me. Yeah. So it needs to go from a really nice little project which you're doing and uh, which is uh, really important. It needs to become, it needs to gather space, uh, uh, speed. How are you going to do that? Well, that's one of the reasons we also selected the partners that we did to work on this to make speed. Because if you grab the largest educator with the Netherlands and they already offer this as, as something for all their other partners. Mm -hmm. And we work with a partner like Randstad who has many, many, many uh, temporary uh, employees that they're putting to work at many companies. All of a sudden you create, a, uh, and what was uh, Jurgen? They come, they come knocking on the door for you. I think uh, we'll, we'll build that out as people start more and more hearing about this and it uh, proliferates across. Uh, across when will it be in, real, in, in production? Uh so right now we're working on a pilot with uh, employees that Randstad has sent to the rival bank. Uh, so we're working concretely on that. I can't give you a definite date on the this open year? source. Uh, that's, this, is, this is my big bet for this year for my team. So uh, yeah. it would be great to have something working. Yeah, and but robust. like I say, it, I mean, to make something open source, is that easy? No, it's not easy because if you can hide your shit, you know, there's so much uh, software running and it's really bad. There's all kinds of mistakes. If you make it open source, you have to document, you have to basically get all the stupid mistakes out of there, the, 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 the weird communication. So open source is real work. But we need open source to basically validate the quality, but then we need a system that it becomes bigger. And so how are you going to now well, so position that in the inside the Rabobank, saying is this going to be a business? Or is it going to no, be no. a... I see, I see this as an extension of what we offer our employees already around, uh, uh, well, in Dutch you call it duurzaam en zetbaarheid, uh, uh, yeah. really future of work uh, as a calling card of, hey, look, we're looking towards your future. Uh, we offer this as a way to, uh, to remove that point of friction that you run into. Yeah. Is it going to be uh, perfect in the next six months? Absolutely not. We're going to also mm -hmm. learn and fall down a couple times. No, but next year, uh, is the ABN AMRO and the ING and uh, Nationale Nederlanden and uh, far, uh, is it going to be 10 organizations which are saying, hey, we're now together, we're a consortium? I don't know. I'll, are you guys in? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who would be interested to participate with the Rabobank on, on to make this uh, financial world more transparent? Can you show uh, some hands? Where are you from? Okay, the Dutch Blockchain Thank Coalition, you. that's easy. What else, what other, uh, <laughs> yeah, who are you from in the back? Okay, KLM? KLM? Yeah. Uh, so oh, okay. perfect, yeah. Yeah, so that would be perfect. Nice. Yeah. So, there, I want 10 people, you know, 10 people next year and saying, hey, this is really important. And then first you do the financial sector, then you do slowly Holland with all the people who work, and then you do Europe. I mean, it could be something really important. Absolutely. Well, and I think, look, uh, the reality is right now, if you look on the any job board here in the Netherlands, CDD, customer due diligence, is the hottest topic uh, and hottest job opening. There's yeah. uh, over 2,000 openings right now not just within banks, but in consulting houses. Everyone wants to know who's their customer, what are they, what are they up to, what are they doing. Yeah. I, I think uh, a It's a nice beachhead. It's a nice beachhead. Exactly. Head. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Alrighty. Any more questions for Mark? I didn't see any questions coming up. So really, do you still have Squiffer or is Squiffer not working? Did anybody? I didn't see any questions. Really weird. So, but uh, I think this is really interesting. And Ideal has started also this way, you know, just yeah. like uh, something the Rabobank it's uh, ch changing it and uh, making it uh, acceptable for everybody, and in the end, we have the most perfect payment system. Let's make the best uh, pay, you know, employees transfer system, and, uh, and that we can still own the data. Yep. Thank you very much, Thanks Mark. Time, Appreciate it.